Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to shift gears a bit. So we spent a lot of time talking about statistics uh, and what we would call things like quantitative literacy, uh, things like hypothesis testing, our proportions talk, our data visualization things. Uh, so we're going to shift quite a bit and take down another topic that is uh, pretty important when it comes to kind of how we live specifically uh, in the U.S. and how a lot of other countries live, and that is uh, how do we determine who wins when we vote? So just to start off, right, what are the essentials of an election? So when we talk about voting, we may talk about things that are more than just a political election, but we're going to frame it in this terminology. So we need voters, right? We need people to actually uh, give their preference, give their choices, we need either candidates or choices, right, for people to actually choose. Uh, and then we need ballots, some way for the voters to then give their opinions on the candidates or the choices. So in uh, the U.S. in particular, uh, the vast majority of the time, this is uh, either a, a yes or no kind of thing uh, if we're dealing with amendments or if we're dealing with an election where we have more than two candidates uh, then you just get to choose one and then go from there. Uh, so we're going to make this a little more interesting because there are other systems that use what is called a preference ballot. And so in this case, if we had three candidates rather than just choosing one, what we would do is we would rank them from our most preferred, our first choice, all the way down to our last choice. So rather than choosing one, we would rank them in order. And we call that a preference ballot. So we would submit this ballot where we've ranked our choices, say uh, a candidate two, then candidate one, then candidate three, right? And that would be my preference ballot. Uh, we're going to stick to what we call linear preference ballots, which just means we're not going to have ties. So I'm not going to say, well, candidate one and then two or three is, you know, it's the same. I'm going to have them tie. So we're going to actually rank all of them. Uh, and then once we collect all those, we'll build something called a preference schedule, which is just a nice way to look at uh, all of the preference ballots combined. So uh, we're going to vote on a, a bunch of things. Now, uh, we are going to do this uh, in the comfort of your own home. Uh, so if you have uh, family members around, or if you have friends that you want to ask, uh, who won't think you're too nerdy for asking a question like this, um, then go ahead and do the following for me. So I want you to pick three somethings to vote on. So I'll give uh, my choice here. Uh, my choice is going to be um, chicken finger restaurants, uh, specifically for three of them, right? I'm going to do Cane's, I'm going to do Zaxby's, and I'm going to do Fusackley's, right? Those are my three. So Cane's, Zaxby's, and Fusackley's are going to be the three things. And then I'm going to have everybody rank the three. So whoever I choose to ask, is going to rank the three of those, and then I'm going to compile all of those together. So what I want you to do is, is try this, even if you just make something up uh, at your desk while you're watching this. Um, make something up, ask some people, get all these preference ballots together, and then see if you can surmise who would win in that election, right? Uh, doesn't have to be chicken finger places. Uh, I just quite like chicken fingers. Uh, you can do whatever you want. But see if you can do it. So we're not, we haven't really introduced any hard or fast rules about this as to who will win. So this is really a trust your gut kind of thing. Right? Do this, look at the information, and just kind of see what you think should happen. So a couple terminology terms here that we need to know. Uh, a majority is a proportional amount more than half. So anything above 50% counts as a majority. Uh, sometimes we don't have a majority of something, but there is usually a largest amount of something. And so we call that a plurality. So majority means more than 50%. Plurality just means the biggest amount. And so our first voting method we're going to talk about is what we call the plurality method, which is just where we take our preference ballot, we only look at the first place uh, winners, and we look at how many votes each one got. Right. So we say, OK, well, candidate one got three first place votes, 
uh, candidate two got five and candidate three got one first place vote. And so we say, oh, okay, well, most first place votes there was candidate two. Now we don't need a majority for this to work. So in the example I just gave, it was a majority. Uh, but if we had uh, something else to the effect of like maybe candidate one gets one, candidate two gets two, candidate three gets three, just to keep it simple, right? Technically that wouldn't be a majority for candidate three because it's not more than 50%, it's exactly 50%. So that doesn't matter in this case for plurality, all we care about is that they have the most, all right? So this seems like the most obvious way and this is probably the one we're most familiar with as far as how our actual system works. So this is this is going to be a, a short lesson, but what I want you to do is take a couple minutes, right? And just think about, is there any other way you could think of where we could make a voting system, right? A way of counting these preference ballots uh, that wasn't just who won the most first place votes. Uh, and maybe a good place to start here is start thinking about what would you do in a tiebreaker, right? What would you do if you had two candidates with the same amount of first place votes, right? That can help you, uh, you know, start thinking about maybe some alternate ways to deal with this. So I will leave you with that. Uh, you have your uh, worksheet, if you're in my social justice math class, uh, that you can go ahead and do uh, whenever it is uh, due. Future Matt will tell you about that now. Uh, but video Matt, for now, we'll say uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.